Hey everyone, it's Steve Harris at Muse Themes. Let's have a look at the state button widget. Now, the reason I wanted to do this video is because we're starting to release some navigation widgets that use the state button as kind of a controller to pop up a menu. And we're finding that a lot of users aren't really building buttons properly in Muse. There's a specific way to use the state button widget and it's to me, it's kind of one of the most underutilized and hidden widgets in Muse, but it's really powerful and it's really easy to use. So let me show you how it works. So I have an example here of two buttons on the page. One of them is built with the state button widget and the other is just basically a rectangle with a text frame in the middle. This top one is how you're seeing most people build buttons in Muse. So you draw the rectangle, you do the text uh, frame in here and put some text, and then you can see if I click on it, it has a hyperlink apply. Let me show you the problem with doing it this way. So if I preview this in the browser, now if we mouse over this button, you can see that the outside does have a hover state, it turns white, but the inside also has one and there's kind of this disconnect between the two. And you can see that even the link itself, there's kind of this area in the middle where you're not able to actually click the link. And so it's not really functioning as a single button. It's clearly two elements placed together. The bottom button is made using the states button widget. And you can see when you mouse over it, the whole thing changes and the rollover state is applied to it at once. So that's what we need to be doing. We need to be making these as a single element. So let me show you how to properly make a button like this in Muse. So let's delete those out. And the first thing we'll do is go to your widgets library. Now this isn't the library that we distribute like toolbox library or anything like that. This is just the generic basic widgets that are included with Muse. Underneath the buttons folder, there is the state button. And if we drag that out on the page, then you get this generic lorem ipsum button. And so the way that this works is you kind of have this frame that contains all of these other elements within it. And when you apply hover states to these elements, the frame will kind of act as the glue that holds them all together and applies that hover state. So let me delete these two elements out at first. And now we've just got this area. I'm gonna remove the fill on that and I'll even remove the stroke. So we basically have nothing on the page but this empty frame. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little navigation style button. So I'll show you what this looks like. Sometimes people call this the hamburger button on the web, but basically it's three little bars together and it's kind of what you're seeing on mobile navigations. All right. Sorry, I'm just having some trouble grabbing it here. Okay, there you go. So I want this separate from the state button for now. So we've got this little navigation button and you know what? Let's even use a little bit of text here. So I'll create a text block and let's call it menu. And I'll just increase the size on that. And let's change the color to white. Okay. There, so we're gonna have those like that. And then you know what, we can include a little icon like this Muse Themes one. Maybe I'll lump that in after, but I'll just show you how this works. So now that we've got these two elements, let's uh, select both of them and let's just drag them into where that state button is. It's just a little bit higher here. So if we just drag them up, you can see that the button kind of highlights. And when I drop them in, they're both now inside that state button. So you see if I mouse over it, I can actually click on the state button and it all moves around together. You're not selecting individual items anymore. So that's kind of how this works. So the way that we can apply these hover states is we can click into the state button just by having it selected, then clicking on an element within. And from there you'll apply, apply unique hover states to these elements. So if we want the menu text to have a hover state or rollover state, sorry, of let's change it to a color. Let's just say it's going to be orange. And then we can set even these rectangles if I select them all. And as long as I have the rollover state applied here, let's change the fill on those to something like blue. And then you can see that the background for the button itself actually has a rollover state. It's got a fill and that fill is kind of this dark gray. Let's just change that to black for now. And so if we click off of it, now you can see that if we click onto it and we select the rollover state for it, everything changes at once. So you can see what's happening there. It's kind of forcing everything to display its rollover state at one time. Now, instead of you actually applying links to each of these little elements within, you just click once on the state button, apply a new link like that, and we'll preview it in the browser. 
So once we previewed it in the browser there, you can see that if we move our mouse over it, they all change and the rollover state is applied. So that's how you'd properly build a button. And you're going to need this technique if you're going to use our new and really awesome square menu widget, which uh, we're releasing pretty quick here. So that's it. That gives you a better idea here of how you can use the state button to actually build complicated and layered buttons and kind of just contain everything in one nice little widget. So that's it. If you have any questions, let us know. And thanks again.